Hi, I'm John Weeks, and this is the Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, how police are set to use drones in the UK. First, though, a biotech company based in the US that's planning to effectively do a Jurassic Park and bring back extinct animals from the past has just passed a major technical milestone in their de-extinction project. Colossal Biosciences' ultimate mission is to bring back the woolly mammoth by putting genes from the extinct species into the DNA of an elephant. Ultimately, once you have this multiplex edited elephant cell that has all of the mammoth traits, then you can take that cell or that nucleus and you can implant it into an elephant egg that has its own nucleus removed, activate it, the early embryo then will be implanted into a healthy surrogate Asian elephant female, and after a long gestation, then we will see the birth of our first calves. Eriona Hai Soli, Colossal's Head of Biological Sciences, has been telling us about their latest milestone, a world-first stem cell breakthrough. They've developed an elephant-induced pluripotent stem cell, or IPSC, a single cell that can breed or propagate indefinitely, which can help to produce any other cell in the body. Professor George Church from Harvard Medical School is working alongside Colossal on the project, and he told us these cells will speed up the process of testing mammoth traits, such as adapting to the cold, in elephant cells. Asian elephants and mammoths are really close genetically, but they're very different in terms of their behavior and their appearance and their resistance to cold. And so we're taking advantage of that closeness to take genetic changes that are fixed in the cold resistant ancestors or ancients in, in the modern ones. Researchers in Scotland have identified a switch that plays a role in controlling anxiety in both humans and mice. It's a section of DNA which switches on key genes in parts of the brain, and experts at the University of Aberdeen discovered that removal of that switch increased anxiety in mice. They said genes have to be switched on in the right cells and at the right times to ensure good health, and when they're not turned on correctly, it can contribute to conditions like anxiety, depression, and addiction. They hope with more research into this switch, they could identify a new target for drugs to help improve the lives of anxiety patients. Next, fancy joining the Millionaires Club and holidaying on the edge of space? Well, a new paper published in Space Policy is advising the space tourism industry to provide better warnings about space weather radiation risks from the sun to future passengers and crew. For somebody paying for a flight on sort of the likes of Virgin Galactic or Blue Origin, they sign a waiver effectively. They sign their rights away, sort of informed consent, and they're informed about the risks from radiation side of things. But there is limited information given to them at the moment, and there is very little legislation behind that. That's Chris Rees, lead author of the paper, who's also a technical expert in nuclear safety and a space weather expert at the University of Surrey. If a passenger says, you know, what what is the radiation risk? Should I be worried about it? These operators will actually have the knowledge to be able to say, we've looked at it, we understand it, and you're, you're fine to fly. The Earth's atmosphere and magnetic fields protect us on the ground, but there can be dramatic increases in potential radiation exposure at higher altitudes and Chris is warning about the levels of radiation, which is measured in what are called millisieverts. In these sort of events, you could end up with sort of 600 millisieverts. Now, the limit for a member of the public in the UK is one millisievert. So you can imagine in a severe space weather event, if you are at high altitude or you're a space tourist and you're getting 600 millisieverts, that's, that's an extreme dose. Police drones will soon be the first on the scene of an emergency in the UK, thanks to funding announced in Wednesday's government budget. Plans were set out for £230 million to support new technology, which also includes increased use of video calls. The first drone tests are due to be carried out in Norfolk in the coming months. If they're successful, the devices will be stationed on buildings and operated remotely to be sent first to scenes to give police early information. It's hoped the drones will give more accurate information on the potential scale of an incident than a shocked member of the public who's called 999 and get there more quickly than a helicopter. Coming up, our coral reefs are on the brink because of warming oceans and how bees coach each other through tough challenges. Welcome back. 
There are fears coral reefs around the world are on the brink of a massive lethal heat shock. It's as global average sea temperatures have reached their highest point on record. In February, the average was 21.06 degrees Celsius, higher than the previous record of 20.98 degrees set in August last year. Heat stress can cause corals to expel the colorful algae living in their tissues. Without the algae, they turn bleached whites, become vulnerable to disease and starvation, and eventually die off. Meanwhile, there's yet more evidence of global warming. Scientists say February 2024 was the warmest on record globally, making it the ninth month in a row with record temperatures for the time of year. That's according to data from the EU's Copernicus Climate Change Service, which said February was 1.77 degrees Celsius warmer than the pre-industrial average for the month, and 0.81 degrees above levels seen between 1991 and 2020. And finally, it turns out bees are even smarter than we gave them credit for. The study has found bumblebees can teach each other to solve complex puzzles that are too difficult to learn alone through trial and error. Experiments were set up to test the insects with a complicated puzzle box task that gave them access to a sugar reward. The scientists trained demonstrator bees to complete the task with a temporary reward at the first step. Then untrained bees learned to open the two-step box from the demonstrators without needing a reward after that first step. The researchers said their study published in the journal Nature shows bees can learn complex tasks through social interaction, challenging the long-held view that this trait is unique to humans. You are up to date. We're back tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock. See you then.